Howdy everybody, Colorado Biker again, and today I'm going to do some cooking. It's been a long time since I did a cooking video, so I am making what I like to call Jewish penicillin. Yes, chicken soup. Chicken noodle soup, or not noodle, but chicken soup. Uh, this recipe was originally published in, I believe it was Nature or Scientific American. It's one of the few that was actually scientifically studied for chicken soup as a curative. Uh, for something so I've been working on it prepping everything as you can see um, So we'll just dive right in here first thing is is that I've got carrots and parsnips which I have been browning in Olive oil in my pot here as you can see they're pretty darn brown now I do this one to soften them but also to get the caramelized sugar off of them it makes a wonderful flavor Okay, and it also is colors it colors the soup a bit too. You can actually see it's kind of yellowish orange so, and that's from the carrots staining it, and also from all the caramels. So my next step is to add the onion, and I want to caramelize the onion a bit. I want to brown the onion, so we'll leave that go for a little while. There we go. And we'll stir that. Oh, missed a little piece. Okay, now some of the other ingredients that I have here, and these are important for this recipe, okay? First one, white sweet potato. Okay, white, whoop, white sweet potato is really important. It's got certain proteins and uh, and nutrients in it. And then we just got your regular potatoes. I have the uh, Yukon Gold or Gold potatoes. I like these the best for this soup. They hold up really well. Um, I do not recommend russet. They just turn to mush. Okay, uh, red potatoes, gold potatoes are good. Next is red garnet yam. Okay. You guys probably know these, so red garnet yam. This is part of the recipe as well, okay? So you've gotta have red garnet yam. And then of course we got your other stuff, celery. I got some corn, some frozen corn that I just threw in there because I like it. Pearl barley. Then we have onion powder, turmeric. This is one of the very important ones, turmeric. Fresh ginger, or sorry, fresh ginger. Uh, and that's about, that's quite a bit. Um, and then fresh garlic. These two are also very important. They found the turmeric, the garlic, and the ginger were some of the active ingredients in it. We have parsley, quite a bit there. It's just dried parsley because I'm making a soup. And then oregano. This is another one that was very important because it also has some antibacterial, antiviral qualities. Some black pepper, and then some garlic powder, and then some, uh, some paprika. And then, of course, I got bay leaf. And I also have a little bit of fennel seed. So I'm going to be putting them in. Now the order in which you put them in is important, okay? The order you put them in is important. First of all, you want to caramelize the carrots. You can see how they've got brown, almost black on them, okay? And I've got a huge pot. I'm making a four and a half gallon batch here. So this is a huge amount, okay? So, and I'm, car I'm caramelizing the onions right now. So yellowing or clarifying and then caramelizing. So I got that. And that's really important because that brings out the sweetness and the savoriness of the uh, yellow sweet onion. So we're not going to do red onion or anything like that. Okay. So we'll leave this go for a little while and I'll get back to you here in just a minute when the onions are caramelized enough. Okay, everybody. All right. The onions have clarified and they are starting to brown. And now is when I'm going to add the garlic because we want to toast the garlic a little bit. So it gets that nice savory roasted garlic kind of flavor. And it doesn't take too long for garlic. And you just want to find mints on this stuff. So we're going to do that. I wish this was smell-o-vision so you could smell this. This smells so damn good so far. See the onions are starting to brown too right there. So, we'll just keep stirring it. And you do want to use a good quality olive oil for this. Not the highest, you know, really expensive shit, but at least a decent quality. Okay, I'm gonna let that go for a minute. You can see the parsnip is nicely browned and all that browning, that'll come off when we add the water here in just a little bit. Okay, so, 
we'll let that go for a minute or two. I have to get my next ingredient, which is a little bit of white wine. I like a nice sweet Chardonnay for this. And I'm going to do about two cups of white wine. I'm going to use this to deglaze the pan. So, and this is just your uh, box, box wine Chardonnay. I just refill the bottle all the time. Makes it easier. And that way it's cheaper and I get good, decent stuff. I'm only cooking with it. I'll still drink it, but only if I'm desperate. So, all right, there's a cup. Do a little bit more. Come on. It takes forever. Glug, glug, glug. Normally don't do this much. There we go. Getting close. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Two cups of Chardonnay white wine right there. Gonna stir again. Oh, yeah. You can tell you're starting to get good caramelizing. You can see all the little brown bits stuck to the bottom of the pan. That's what we want. Those are those natural sugars and salts that are coming out of the uh, onions and the garlic and the carrots and the parsnips. And that's what gives it such a nice flavor. Ooh, that was loud. All right. So we're going to add a little bit of white wine at a time to deglaze the pan. There we go. And with that cook off, and it reduces the wine a bit too. There we go. The steam helps cook the carrots, or it helps cook the uh, onions as well. Helps them caramelize. Oh God, the smell is so good. So damn good. And I've got it on high heat right now. So, and I'm gonna keep it on high pretty much the whole time. And yeah, that flash steaming just softened up those onions real good. You notice all the black bits. The pan is now deglazed, all that is gone off the bottom of the pan. And by the way, I am using a silicone high temperature spatula. Don't use a low temperature spatula. Use a wooden spoon if you have to, but don't use a low temperature one, otherwise you're gonna melt it. You don't want plastic in your food. A little more white wine. All right, we're almost there. Oh, that smell. Ho, 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 ho. I'm getting drunk. No, I'm not. All right, let's see here. Okay, yeah, that's starting to deglaze everything nicely. See, now we're getting a nice, rich color. See that nice color there? Oh, yeah. It's probably steaming up the lens on this thing, too. There we go. We're reducing the wine as well. It gives it a nice malty flavor. Nice, rich, malty flavor. Okay. We're just going to go over to hell with it and just pour in the last of it. There we go. Now we got a nice start to it. Next step is we add the vegetables in order of hardness. So we're going to do the red garnet yam, white sweet potato, and then we're going to hold off on the potato and the rest, or the potato, the celery goes in very last, corn goes in last. We're also going to add some water and our chicken. So, and for this recipe, we want to do a whole chicken. And I've already prepped it here. And I've got it in a basket because we're going to pull it out later. Okay, we're going to pull it out and we're going to pull all the meat off the bone. We want to do a whole chicken bone in because it, when it cooks, you get all that marrow that comes out of the bone. You get a lot more nutrition out of it. You get everything out of it when this happens, okay? You wanna leave skin on, everything. Because part of it is also the fat, the marrow, all that stuff is in there. All these different little proteins and things that you don't normally get. You can't do this recipe with just a chicken breast or something. It has to be whole chicken, okay? You gotta get that bone marrow in there because that has some important calories and some nutrients. So now we're just gonna top it up with water and we're gonna bring it to a boil. So just give me a minute here. And we're just gonna bring it up to, to where it covers about three quarters, well, to where it covers the chicken, but just. And then we're gonna add the salt and everything else here once we get the water in it.
There we go. That should be good enough. Because we're going to cover it too well with the steam. We'll do a couple more cups. And the steam will also cook the chicken too. So, there we go. There we go. That's just right, right there. Okay. You say, oh, it's already full. You're not going to fit everything else in. Once I take the chicken out, debone it, shred the chicken, and uh, take this metal rack out, you know, there's going to be less density in there. So we'll have that. But in the meantime, what we can add is that's the dog asking to go out. Doggy doorbell. There we go. That's a garlic powder. Don't want to forget, we want the fresh ginger. And this is a lot of fresh ginger, but this is a huge batch. As you can see, it's a huge pot. So this is a four gallon pot. I think five actually, but it's huge. Okay, so there's the ginger. We'll do the parsley. Okay. And stir that in a little bit. All right, there we go. And if you ever wonder why you make uh, you make like a chicken soup or something, it doesn't look the same as the stuff you buy. It's because you're probably not adding turmeric. Turmeric it gives it that yellowish color. Okay, and it's a lot of turmeric. That's like a tablespoon and a half, or a good you know, one good heaping tablespoon. Once you turn that, put that in, you can see it gets that yellowish color. Okay, now it's starting to look like chicken soup. Okay. Next, the oregano. Once again, that's over a quarter cup. Heaping tablespoon of fresh ground black pepper. About a tablespoon of onion powder. Oh, sorry, that was garlic powder. And then the paprika, which gives it more of that color and flavor. And then I'm going to add fennel seed. This gives it a nice flavor as well, kind of an anise -y type of flavor. And about a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. There we go. There we go. So the fennel seed and soup is not complete without bay leaf. Yes, gotta have bay leaf. So, all right, here we go. Woo, it's getting away from me. So let's do some big ones here. And we'll do quite a few. Because I do love bay laurel. When I lived in, uh, that's a bad one. When I lived in the south, we actually had a bay laurel tree just in my apartment complex in college. And I used to go snip off leaves off that thing all the damn time. I loved it. So, but they don't grow up here. It's too cold where I live. There's a blizzard outside right now. So, anyway, so there we go. Stir all that in. And now we're going to bring it to a boil, cover it, and let it cook for about an hour to an hour and a half. Probably about an hour and a half because this is a big batch. Then we're going to pull out the chicken. Now we're going to do the chicken. And we'll pull the chicken and then put in the other potatoes, the celery, and the rest. So there you go. See, that the color of it has changed so much already and it hasn't even boiled yet. See, that looks like the, the stuff that you get out of a can. But this is better. This is homemade. So anyway, that's it for now. We'll come back and do the rest of the video when that is cooked so that'll be about an hour hour and a half so we'll give it an hour and 15. okay that's it for now we'll see you hey everybody bit. i am back so it's been about an hour and no about an hour and 20 hour and 25 minutes and whoops spilled a little corn there and the chicken, I've already pulled it out, and I've already pulled it. Here it is right here. So now we just add the ingredients. So there's the chicken. It's a whole chicken that's been deboned and pulled. Then we're going to add the carrot or the uh, potatoes. Oop, don't miss out on the potatoes. And then the corn. There we go. The pearled barley. We'll put in there. Finally, the celery. All right, we got all that in there. So that is now everything. We're gonna give it a good stir. There we go. Oh yeah, this is meaty. 
this is gonna have a lot it's almost like a stew all right so that is it the only thing we're missing now is the salt and since this is such a big batch we are going to add probably about an eighth of a cup of salt and then we'll come back later and taste it again and then add salt to taste but that is it that is Jewish penicillin this recipe has been tried and it has been peer-reviewed and it also has been clinically trialed so they did find that it did have some benefit to it it's not a cure for anything believe me it's not but it tastes damn good and it's good for you it's good homemade soup and it is excellent for you so it might not cure the coronavirus evil nothing really will but a little bit of comfort food is always nice when you're sick and there's nothing better than good old chicken soup so there you go nice chicken soup for when you're not feeling well it has some qualities that may help you fight off an infection but I make it all the time whenever we get sick we get a cold we get the flu we get something so I figured this would be a good time to do the recipe and just show you all what it's like what it is and there you go so there's about four gallons of uh, nice big chicken stew, uh, soup I'm gonna let it stew for probably a couple more hours the longer you let it go the better it gets so I'm gonna let it stew for oh, probably about two more hours and then I'm even gonna put it in the oven at 200 degrees overnight so that way it's just going to soften everything. It's just going to be wonderful. So I'm going to come back with more recipes. We will make homemade noodles. We will make homemade dumplings. And we will cook them in this. So that way we've got chicken and dumplings. And chicken noodle soup. And a whole bunch of stuff. So anyway, that's it for now. And keep on checking back. And remember, keep on prepping. I want a darling little Jewish princess. Shit about cooking and is arrogant.